And welcome back to Game Quest. I'm Mike. And I'm Tony. And I guess we're heading back into town. The say our goodbyes. Bid farewell. Never coming back to this island again. I guess the ending is still in this episode. You know, I'm going to go ahead and take off this helmet. I probably have the worst case of hat hair in human history. <laughs> Wow, I, I did it twice. Special <laughs> items, not special weapons. There we go. Oh. There we go. Combat scenario is done, so we can take the helmet off. Oh, hey, it's these nerds. You did a pretty good job for my sidekick. Never agreed to that. People of the other islands about how you're my sidekick. Okay. Never agreed to that. <laughs> Just don't forget, we let you into the gang, see? You're still the low man of the totem pole, got it? That is more fair, but still incorrect. Pretty impressed, okay, maybe we lose. You've got us built beat. At least one person here is honest. Right? Is that the vegetable store guy? It is. Mega Man, thanks for your help. Here we got a baby boy. We named a Mega Man after <laughs> you. Why would you do this to a child? <laughs> thank you so much for saving me and my baby. And the island. Huh? A baby's just fine, thank you. Doing great too, as you can see. Excellent. Both bakeries are closed, apparently. Apparently. Uh, I'm a Mega Man. Well, I never got a chance to meet your girlfriend. But I'm sure she's a wonderful girl. What? Me? Jealous? Maybe a little. Teehee. Thank you for saving the city. Yeah, you remind me of my dead husband when he was younger. He must, and alive. <laughs> he must have been a great dude. Come back and play with Paprika sometime. Oh, hey, Paprika, what's up? Woof, woof, woof. Good luck. Oh maybe. my god, the dog can talk. Or we can just speak dog. Maybe we can just... Yeah, maybe we can just speak the animals. Do you really have to go, Mega Man? You're the best digger we ever had as a customer. I'm sure you'll do fine wherever you go. You and your spotter roll. You two seem to get along real well. Like a digger and a spotter should. Hmm. You did it, Mega Man! Now I'll be able to dig all over the island. Just kidding. I think I'll stick with the little ruins near the city. I mean, there's still all sorts of reaver bots in the other ruins, right? Anyway, take care of yourself. No promises. I don't really value my own life. I'm getting in all sorts of danger. So I feel like now is as good a time as any to basically do our uh, traditional post-game conversation. Yeah. Uh, I adore this game. <laughs> it might actually be one of my favorite games of all time. I'm planning on starting a new training program so my men will be able to protect the island even without you. Why didn't you be having to show Fails to crash land in our island any time? <laughs> okay, smartass. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. I salute your bravery. Uh, I absolutely adore this game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Oh. Uh, to give you... Oh, hey, there's all of the unique NPCs. There's the art gallery lady, the uh, news lady... We'll talk to them momentarily. <gasps> Wait, is that the girl from the hospital? Yeah, I think that's Ira. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me and everyone. You know what? I've decided that once I get out of the hospital, I'm going to learn how to be a digger just like you. Promise me that when I grow up, you'll take me with you on one of your digs, okay? Overwhelming firepower. That is the most important thing you'll need as a digger. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things that go into being a good digger, but, uh, what about you? What's your Oh, you're the jerk kid, aren't you? Yeah, he's the one who plays pranks. Thanks. Wish you had more time to play with each other. Are you coming back anytime soon? Talk to Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Wiley. Oh, yeah. Uh, might as well talk to him, too. Guess this means we somehow managed to live through the legendary disaster, thanks to you, Mega Man. I don't know exactly what happened at the main gate, but I do know that if it weren't for you, we'd probably all be dead right now. Thank you for everything you've done for us. 
feel that as I've been researching this island and its history, I've stumbled onto something that goes beyond our lives, even beyond our existence. I don't know what you saw, what you learned inside of the main gate, and even if I did, I don't think I could understand it. But I plan to keep studying until all the mysteries here are solved. Good for you. It's good to have goals. Fruitless and unreachable they might be. <laughs> I really have to thank you for everything you've done, including donating those artifacts you found at the museum. Thanks to you, things have gotten real busy around here. It'll only be a matter of time before I can make my museum the best museum in the world. Stop dodging my conversation prompts. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, our blue hero has come to say goodbye to us. Just kidding, today's my day off. Thanks for saving the island, Mega Man. I think we miss you. It was a lot of fun getting to watch you in action. Oh. Pager. Wow, looks like they need me back at the studio. See you later. I'm glad we didn't shoot down your ship. The pager. Yeah, it's a pager. She has a pager. How... Weirdly quaint. <laughs> okay, where's if we get a cheeseburger while we talk about this? Uh... I think it's a good way of describing this game in general. Just, everything about it is charming. It's quaint. Eh. I don't know. I tend to use quaint as an insult, so it feels weird to say it as a compliment. I don't use it as an insult. Uh. I adore this game. Like, I only have one or two very specific criticisms about this game. And only one of them is really directly applicable. <laughs> well, okay, so the thing is, is this game came out, or at least was made, before DualShock controllers were a thing. Yeah. Because what happened was, we moved into the 3D graphic era. But with the, uh, the, with the uh, PlayStation 1, the Sega Saturn, and the... Uh, Nin and the uh, Nintendo and uh, the Nintendo 64 uh, has on the home console front being the three main ones that people knew about, and then Nintendo based put a joystick on their N64 controller, and proved to everybody how incredibly necessary they were for navigating a 3D environment and this kind of a thing. So Sony fired back with a DualShock and put two joysticks on, and then a lot of stuff came out of that. But this game was before then, so certain controller things did not make as well, which is why we have the weird L1, R1 to basically change directions and then D-pad for directional movements. Because this came out, like, around the time everyone was still figuring out what three-dimensional movement and gameplay was going to look like. So that's what I mean when I say I can only half criticize this game for its missteps. Because we have Mega Man Legends 2... And it controls so much better and irons out all of the flaws as far as the game's control scheme goes. So it's like, with hindsight behind them, with looking at what the competition was doing at that point or whatever, they made an extremely good, well-handling game, still faithful to how this game plays. So I can only, I can only criticize it a little bit for that and the whole product of its time kind of that way. Mm -hmm. Uh... The one bit of criticism I do have is there are certain parts that come out of that unrefined control thing and certain issues. For instance, the racing minigame. <laughs> the things are pretty tight. The only There's no way of making things easier, learning or leveling things up or making it... They, you just have to get really good at it to beat it. Or, you have to be basically really good and or really lucky. And the thing is, is, uh, due to the kind of frustrating control, the kind of awkward, fr somewhat frustrating control scheme, in my opinion, it just, it gets awkward and weird, especially given the fact that, like, it's necessary to, uh, completing certain parts of the game to do that. Like the shining laser, for instance, you can only get by completing some of that stuff. Like... If I, if I, though I'm trying to think of a way to describe it, if um, if the like basically the skates were more integral to the game at large, 
having it so that basically you need to be really good at like good at the skates for that particular thing might not be so egregious but it only really is relevant in that particular moment yeah because there's there's a bunch of stuff where it's like there's a lot of upgrades in this game that are quality of life for instance the uh, armor upgrades you can buy the helmet uh make you way more durable in battle and that makes you uh, a lot better off you can increase the life bar uh you can get the uh the what's it called the energy canteen which by the way goes up to 99 slots <laughs> so yeah it's like 7 million zenny to upgrade everything you can upgrade with money in the entire game to the maximum um yeah, there's just uh the thing is is like the the rocky like the only thing that you technically need is the uh springs because there are some ledges you can't climb without that additional jumping power. But like the skates are technically optional. You literally never have to use them a single time in the entire game if you don't want to. Uh most of the buster upgrades are op like pretty much all the buster upgrading kind of stuff is optional. Most of the uh special weapons are optional. Especially if you don't care about uh, completing certain, like, bonus things or uh, getting certain objectives. I think, like, the only thing that you technically need to acquire in order to get everything in the game, as far as, like, collecting uh, sub-stuff, is, like, the drill arm. And that's just because there's a couple of, like, a drill arm or a certain uh, grenade upgrades, some kind of thing like that, so you can get through certain barriers. But, like, everything else is, like, quality of life stuff where it's, like, we take way less damage than we normally do because of all the uh, armor upgrades we bought. We have more health. We have uh, healing items we can draw upon, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But, like, because of how optional a lot of the game is, like, a lot of it doesn't feel as super well integrated as it could be. And this is another thing that they fixed more in Legends 2 where you... You're guided slightly more towards getting certain pieces of equipment that are necessary for later parts of the game, or at least really, really useful. Uh, I do have some criticisms for two, but that's a video. But that's a video for when and if we do uh, Legends Two, which I want to do, but we'll see where we get where we uh, we'll see where we go. Mm -hmm. um, the thing I will say about Mega Man Legends and this. So, I like a lot of games. Some of games are basically games that other people like and other people, like, have mixed feelings on. Mm hmm But I'm a fan, for instance, though not to the same degree of tone as Tony, he will wax po poetic all day, <laughs> of things of uh, Nosgoth, which is where, like, the Legacy of Kane series takes place in, just because it has, like, some really kind of interesting lore and fun character moments. And, like, some of the best, like, uh, hammy, intense voice acting. Uh, I like Devil May Cry, all of them, including the second one, which I think I might be the only one to genuinely enjoy that game. <laughs> given by some of the, uh, criticism that comes out for it. And stuff, but it's like, I play Devil May Cry and I have a good time. I play... Mario games and I can basically relax and have fun and basically enjoy the somewhat challenging platform and like the colorful environments. I love Halo as a franchise for the most part. There are a few uh, missteps, I think, that, yeah, whatever, personal opinion. But like, I liked Halo enough that I was disappointed in some of like the things that happened in the later Halo games because I knew so much about the lore previously because I was so into it. Mm -hmm. I get... I'm so deep into Star Wars that I kind of, uh, I feel the urge to basically go and just take a peek at upcoming stuff, even if I don't feel like I might enjoy a given product. I kind of like being aware of what's happening with the franchise, because it's been such a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love Legend of Zelda. I adore, like, Deus Ex and different parts of it. Mega Man Legends is the only game I have ever played that every time while playing it or after having beat it, I go and look into things like uh, game design stuff, like basically programming lessons and different engines and stuff and look into stuff to like try and get back into game design again. Like 
Mega Man Legends is one of the few games that genuinely inspires me. I would love to make a game like Mega Man Legends to like share with the world and play. And I think that's some of the highest, if somewhat specific, praise I can give a game. <laughs> that was heavy. But I can see like why you like this game so much. Like I personally like as much as I like staring this game. at this burger joint for like ten minutes. Yeah, I'm you gonna... said you were gonna go inside and get a burger, and you never did it. Oh shit! I'll go now. Not really that hungry. Oh well. Oh well. Then we just we just waste everyone's time. Then Mega Man. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Well, like I can see why. Um, I can see why you love this game as much as I do. I can see why. Um, why so many people like this game just in general. And like why the series is just beloved. And I I don't adore it. I really enjoy it and I love coming back to it every once in a while. And um I don't think I actually have that many complaints. Like I you know, I feel like it's unfair getting on it for basically like um it's the current like uh, like it's art style and stuff like that, because like it's well done and like it even though you can see issues with it here and there and basically small glitches and stuff, like, it still holds up pretty well. Yeah, it still holds up pretty well, and it's just, like, it's still, like... I know you mean where there's, like, some stuff where it's, like, there are issues, but some of it is, like... Are we going to criticize this game for being a product of its environment? Because this game came out in, I think, 1997, 1998, depending on where you lived in the world. Mm-hmm. Remember, you helped me find my lost money. Oh, this guy. Oh, hey. That's a little my dream house. Promise me you'll come over and visit sometime. Okay. Well, like, I think, like, the only actual complaints I can think of off the top of my head that, like, have nothing to do with this game being a product of its time is basically the way it kind of, um... The way it paces, like, the way, like, um, it's, um... It's difficulty hikes. Yeah, I see what you mean. It becomes ba it's really it's really difficult like immediately in the game. Mhm. Mm Just because like the uh Bond invasion before you get any into like the good stuff and from then on there's so many opportunities to upgrade. Yeah. I kind of like the fact that you can sit and like grind your way past a lot of obstacle goes like we had fun laughing at how incredibly broken the active buster is when fully upgraded. Yeah. But, like, I kind of enjoy that you can sit there and grind and get better gear and just upgrade your stuff until you can do something like that. Mm -hmm. Because it means that, like, if you don't necessarily have, like, the skill you can put in the hours. Mm -hmm. There is an alternate way of getting to the... Basically to, like, basically to the end point. Um, other than that, I think the only other, co like, complaint that I would give this game specifically is that um I'm not really a fan of its bosses which isn't to complain that um that they're bad they just don't feel like bosses for the most part like I think the except like the main exception to that being Juno well and the bonds and the bonds yes but um a lot of the um bosses that you fi fight that are weaver bots are just upskilled weaver bots and like when they become enemies, like like just normal enemies later on, it like they don't feel like they've added anything special from my perspective to the game, rest of the game, and it just kind of feel like it's one of those few moments where I'm sitting there going like they could have handled this a little bit better. Yeah, and I think they do handle a lot of that stuff better in the sequel, especially. Like, there's a lot of Mega Man Legends one that feels like the rough draft in a lot of ways, like um. It's like uh, Halo, for instance. Halo 1 is a very, very different creature than Halo 2. Mm -hmm. But then if you play Halo 3, it feels like they took the Halo 2 formula and refined it. Yeah. So, like, it seems like Halo 1 was in kind of the beta test for the game they decided to make with, like, the rest of the franchise. And I feel like that's the case with, like, Mega Man Legends in a way, where, like, 2 is a lot polished and a lot better. And from what I saw of the Legends 3 demo before it got canceled, looked like it felt like... Legends 2 upgraded in some ways rather than basically Legends 1, 2, and 3, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Which is in criticism. Legends 2 was great in a lot of ways. But again, specific criticism for specific things. 
But like, yeah, a lot of this, a lot of this game, like the little bits of it that are basically wrong with it or have issues seem to be, I don't know, product of its time kind of things. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, yeah, the controls are a little awkward. There's a couple of things they could have done better. Like this art style seems slightly dated now. But like, yeah, no, it's just, it's a beautiful game and I love it. If I were to do a top ten list, I'd argue about, like, which one specifically would go in which place, but Legends 1 and 2 would be right next to each other in the top five somewhere. Yeah, I can see that. Like, for me, like, um, I kind of, like, I tend to mentally sum it up as it's a Mega Man game, and I have haven't really played a Mega Man game I've actively disliked. This one's just, there's a lot more love and effort. That it feels like there's a lot more love and effort put into this one than most of the ones that I play. Yeah, it's weird to say, but like I don't, I don't think there's a bad Mega Man game overall. Like that's uh, that's one of the things that really frustrates me because Capcom makes uh, choices as a company <laughs> that I don't necessarily like, or they change it around. But like they have so many franchises that have just be- there's like an integral part of my life in some way or another, mm-hmm. like uh, Street Fighter or Monster Hunter or Mega Man or Devil May Cry or Resident Evil or... Pick- Breath of Fire? Breath of Fire is another great one. But it's just like... It's funny because I look at it and it's just like, oh, it's just like... It's like top 20 like favorite games. Like 15 of them are in some way associated with Capcom. Like, even roundabout ways, like, they made a couple of really good Zelda games for the uh, Game Boy. Hmm. There was, like, uh, I think they did the Oracle game. It's irrelevant to the, this game anyway, but it's just, like... But then it's just, like, there's stuff on top of that that I don't like. And so it feels like sometimes when they make these choices that I basically have mixed feelings on or dislike, like when they canceled Legends 3 mm-hmm. after building up all the hype for Legends 3 and everything like that, it feels like they're genuinely holding my entire like childhood hostage sometimes. Yeah. Just because they seem to own like at least a decent share of everything. Uh, and it's not even like a hostage that basically you can like negotiate with well, basically like a hostage taker you can negotiate with as far as I can tell they, they're basically like they're schizophrenic they have no idea what they actually want uh, speaking of Legends 3 I think my favorite thing is basically they tried to blame the fans for it after like the fans were like basically did all like a lot of the work for the game where it's like yeah like basically like we'll have contests this stuff and they had people voting on stuff and there's like a campaign that has over a hundred thousand people backing it like i think it's actually a bigger number now who are like why did you cancel the game bring it back Mm -hmm. and it's just like you see so much stuff where it's like a lot of the designs for like the game and like stuff in the game was like fan designs that one contest basically held by the devs voted on by like the team and or fans and say there, it's like, yeah, we decided there wasn't enough interest in it. And then, like, Capcom of Europe basically is like, no, you guys should have basically cared more and actually contributed. After they went out of their way to be like, hey, you, you don't have to contribute. You can join this site and, like, do stuff and be part of the process if you want. But it's totally fine. So, you know, like, just, like, sit back and cheer us on from the sidelines. And they're like, yeah, we decided that because you sat back and cheered us, like, basically there wasn't enough people actively involved. Nah. Even though there was a massive amount of basically support and stuff going on and I I think the part of the reason is because Inafune or whatever uh, basically was considered the father of Mega Man in a lot of ways mm-hmm. or was considered to be the guy he was like the guy in charge of the Mega Man franchise for a long time left the company hmm. and Japan has this really like weird culture basically built around loyalty where it's like it's never okay to turn your back on, like, some group that you were a part of at some point. Like, no matter what's up with that group or what's going on. So, like, Capcom felt like they owed, they owned, like, his stuff. And, then, like, as soon as he walked away, like, that's it. Like, this is the reason that Sakurai basically makes, like, great Smash games. Because they're holding Kirby hostage. It's a well-known fact. He only cares about, like, basically making fun Kirby games. Uh-huh. And Nintendo is just holding that entire franchise hostage and forcing him to make Smash. Because Smash gets hype. And hmm. makes money. But, uh, yeah, that's that's Mega Man Legend. I don't see anything much else to talk about at this point. No. Oh, the game mostly speaks for itself, honestly. So, let's talk to these people here. So, you're really leaving. Yep. How about goodbye? 
Time to go then. Before we go, you want to hear a secret? Yeah. Sure. Did you know that if you start a new game without cutting the power, you can try the game again at a different difficulty setting? Here's another hint. The faster you play, or the harder it is, the easier it will become. Wonder what that means. Maybe you could figure it out. Uh, what that hint means is literally what it sounds like. If you beat this game on normal mode, which we just did, mm -hmm. you unlock hard mode. Which is basically the same as easy as uh, normal mode, except for there's a... Uh, I think there's, like, some of the Reaver bots are, like, tougher in some areas. Like, there's more whatever. But, like, everything else is basically the same. It's just some of the, mo like, the enemies are harder to deal with, deal more damage, to have more health. Mm -hmm. And then easy mode is, I think, normal mode, except for maybe there's, like, a couple enemies that are easier. And also you get an item called Buster Max, which just maxes out every stat on your Buster from the beginning of the game. You just start with it. Oh. You don't need special weapons. It's, like, as strong as anything else you can get in the entire game. <laughs> it's hilarious. Guess we just talked to Barrel and rolled on? Yeah, I think Barrel is first. There we go. Guess it's time to move on. Okay. Well, if you're all done with your goodbyes, I guess it's time to go on then, right? Yep. Thank you so much for your help. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Take care. Goodbye. See you later, Amelia. I think that's the first on-screen example of no one else understanding data when he talks. Hmm. Goodbye. I think in two it's more explicit. Anyway. Away goes the flutter. I'm going to have to put in a thing, like a disclaimer saying we talk about the game a lot, and then, like, just cut back to this. Fair enough. After all that, you still didn't find out anything about your mom and dad. Oh yeah, that was the... Well, it can't be helped. It's not like we meant to come here in the first place, right? But everything worked out in the end, right? Yeah. Hey, Mega Man, did something happen while you were underground? Huh? Yeah, well, not really. Don't worry about it. Well, I don't know, but... <laughs> don't ever forget that I'll always believe in you, okay? Roll! Mega Man, roll! Look outside! The island! Mega Man! Okay! What is it? Whoa! Roll left! Left! Huh? Okay. Hey! Isn't that... Aww. They all came to see us all. Oh, hey, there is another place where you can see the librarian's unique sprite. I hope those of you at home are watching. Our brave heroes are taking off, heading for new adventures. As you can see, the people of Catalogs have come out to send them off and wish them well. Hey, everybody! They were all really nice people. Maybe we'll come back here and see them again. Yeah. Okay, setting new course. Here we go! In case you're up behind the wheel of a ship, never do that. <laughs> Just saying. Uh. You almost never want to do it. You ever, almost never want to spin it that quickly. And when you do, you don't want to just fling it and let go and just let Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> uh. I was about to ask. So we had that entire conversation running around. Yeah. Wait, why is it gasket in the credits? Why is it gasket in the credits? Sure 
It's been casket everywhere else. Why does it say casket the end credits? Hmm. Sir Boss Juno, Inspector Mayor. Yeah. What are you looking at? Oh. <laughs> it's a dog. <laughs> Minigame design. Masahiro, you're the one. <laughs> There's actually a pretty short list of people who worked on this game, all things considered. Like, this is a small team. Yeah. I forgot how small PlayStation teams could be. Like, we're used to hearing about these, like, AAA studios that have, like, 10,000 people dedicated to modeling eyelashes for a single character. It's kind of crazy. That, like, three people did all the facial animations for this game. And now they're just, I don't know, they're just replaying all the voice clips from across the entire game now. <laughs> it kind of sounds like that, yeah. Let's go. That's it. You don't really hear, um, m like, music remixed with sound clips like this in, like, official OSTs anymore. Yeah. Like, Halo did it once and no one liked it. I actually don't remember the one you're talking about off the top of my head. <laughs> it did. It was nothing like any other song in the Halo OST, like a, like OST. It was like, um, if I remember correctly, some kind of weird like club dance thing with like basically Cortana talking, like basically it, like in the thing, just like I genuinely don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it totally exists. I'll. I have to look into this later. Uh, I think my favorite. Uh, basically random in-game kind of song was, uh, I think God Hand was, the God Hand song was the end credit song or whatever. Was it the end credit song? I think it was, because I think that, I think it was just it does the context doesn't matter just the guy who played uh, <laughs> Gene, I think it was. It's been a while. It's been a while. Pretty sure it's Gene is the main character but it's like, it's the actual voice actor, like essentially like singing like to hype up the game in the game and it's just like he can't sing and maybe that was a deliberate choice but it's just like i don't even remember if that was e made it was even in the like a version that was even in like the original like any other versions of the game or if it was just the one version of the game just had him screaming like this entire ridiculous the song out unscripted and they just put it in Huh. I just remember it being like this thing where it's just like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? And then it's like, you look into it. Bound Global Solutions, wow. I had special bikes. Yeah, these credits are actually really short. I totally forgot that this part was it was in the credit system. Hey, everybody! Oh yeah, because I think like uh, some version of this like I one of them came with a demo of the other one or something. I can't remember. Or at least some release of the end. But yeah, there's yeah, Fune. I actually not sure the other guy is the top of my head. Well, there they go. No, 
not a care in the world. Hey, Tron, can this thing go any faster? No, it can't. I had to gather up all the spare parts from everything he blew up to build this. That's right, that's right. We'll just have to rough it until we get to the next island. If we sell what we found, we'll get back what we lost and then some. We'll live like kings. Man. Who would have thought there was such a huge refractor down there? And all we had to do was just wander in and pick it up. I told you we'd have the last lap. <laughs> That's assuming we make it to the next island without sinking. Huh? Huh? Oh, huh? Well, no! Oh god! He's in a good mood. What's happening to our capture? Uh -uh. Man, I totally want to steal that in fr like instead of them. Yeah, it's like one fight. It's like, oh my god, it's so huge. Like how it's just they get into a boat made out of scraps from everything we've blown up on the island while fighting them. And that's just how they choose to like be all see you next time. I was like, it's like, oh, clear time. You took a long time to do that. Maybe you shouldn't put stuff in there that takes basically <laughs> literal decades to grind for then, huh, Capcom? <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, that was Mega Man Legends, and we will see you uh, next time on Game Quest. Thanks. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to just this quick little thing. Uh, I figured I would go ahead and make allow the shining laser. You fully upgrade a shining laser to make its case. Huh. Not good enough. What was that? Huh. That is a uh, fast uh, like draw from his HP pool. It's slightly faster than the active buster, yeah. Yeah, we're not doing this entire thing again. I just figured I should let the the second best weapon in the game make its case. <laughs> yeah, it makes a pretty good case for itself. Okay, so uh, it that's it for real. We'll, we out. We out.